Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Keith. What you got going on today? Uh, I have a problem from the Tableau forums today that involves relationships and row-level calculations. Okay, record-level calcs. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so in this case, I, th I think what I want to start with out with is the data. And uh, so just to show kind of the data and the problem, and I made up some simple data here. So our, our kind of monastic or main table here is table A, and it's got four rows and two categories. Okay. And the idea is for when the category is blueberry, we want to pull the data associated with the B key. And when the category is carrot orange, we want to pull the data associated with a C key. And then we have a B table with our B values in it and a C table with our C values in it. So in this case, um, we've got values one and two from B, so we should see five and four. So when we're summing up our blueberry data, we should see nine. Okay. And then when we're summing up our carrot orange data, we want C keys one and two, and we should see a value of five. Okay. For that. Now switching over to Tableau, and we have our B value and our C value, so we see that nine and that five, but our combined calculation, um, which is right here. So kind of a straightforward calculation. If category is blueberry, then return the B value, else C value, end. Uh -huh. We sum that up and we get two. Right, and it should be nine plus five is 14. Or nine for the blueberry and five for the carrot orange. And then a 14 in the is, grand total. Got it, okay. Or a 13, yeah, 14 for the grand total. Sorry, okay. math brain failed there. Yep. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So with this, I it was one of those things where I was going through it and the calcs weren't working right and I was stuck and starting to dive into looking at the sequel and everything. And right. then in the back of my brain, I'm like, there's, there's something going on here. So I went back to the documentation. And okay. when relationships were first introduced, there was this set of um, blog posts that Bethany Lyons did on relationships. Here it is. So this was relationships part two, tips and tricks. And um, I know you've gone through this, a chunk and everything. And when we get down here, there's a section on rule level calculations. Yeah, to some extent, I went through it, right? Like, because I gave that um, talk at, at TC20 last year about relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and we've just posted that. Um, it's slow and smooth. And I just rewatched it again. It's very good if you want to yeah. just look at the ins and outs of that thing. And Bethany prepared me a lot for that. Yeah, it's a great overview. Yeah, she she really helped me yeah. a lot. And I remember, you know, mm -hmm. she had these three blog posts and the whole thing was a mind melt for me to even get so that I could look like I knew what I was talking about. And honest to God, I didn't I didn't get this far down into this second blog post, you mm -hmm. know. Um it, it they really began to go kind of deep. So this is mm -hmm. new to me just as much as it is to you. Yeah. And this and this is something it it's it's new and it's something I learned once, I've run into this once or twice before, and then I just had it happen again. Okay. Um, and just kind of going back to the well. And in relationships, there's this thing where row level calculations across tables use inner joints. And that's what's happening here in inside this calculation that we're getting an, an inner joint effect. And and to just make this kind of visible, I took a little time and did some basic drawings on it. So this is our data in a way. Um, oh, right. Those are blueberries and your carrot oranges. Exactly. Okay. Um, so we have the table A is kind of all of our data. And we have 
table B matches up for blueberries and there's one bit of the carrot orange that matches for B and then C matches up with the rest of A. So okay. there's our data and there's our rows in our data. Uh-huh. And then when we do the row level calculation, it's giving us, it's doing that inner join across the tables and the only thing that it returns is effectively what goes with row number three in our original data. And then when we look at that data, just to switch back to Excel here. Because because that's the one row in table A that has values for both blueberry and carrot B. orange. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So when we look at this, we have C key one has a value of two. Well, uh -huh. here we are, row number three. They were talking about there's our B key and there's our C key number one, which has a value of two. And going back to Tableau, that's what we get in the data. Okay. So that's how that's how that number two is landing there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if I bring out the row ID in the view, like let's use Tableau to look at that. So all of these are, there's nothing here, there's nothing here, there's nothing here. So that there, there's nulls we're seeing in the view because Tableau's imputing them. Um, but for a combined calculation, it's doing an inner join before that, and it has no data. And so this is what that section of her second blog post means, is that if you're using a record level calculation that crosses logical tables, it's going to function as an inner join. Yep. Okay. At that row, at that row level, it's doing that inner join, and then we're aggregating. Um, and so there's a way for me in thinking about this. This is kind of an order of operations problem. Okay. That we're doing this inner join, and then we're keeping the inner join results, and then we're aggregating it. Um, and what if we kind of flip things around a little bit and I'm going to go back to the drawings here for this. Oh, your, your kind of standard order of operations problem. If you just did things in a different sequence, it would work out fine. Oh, okay. yes. So let's get our B data um, as a calculation and let's get our C data as a calculation and then we can add them together. Got it. Okay. And do our aggregation. Yep. And so back in Tableau, we have a combined calculation here. And I'll just use this to show the formula. So our B value row level is if the category is blueberry, then return the B value. And our C value row level is if the category is not blueberry, then return the C value. Oh, I see what you've done. So what you've done is you've you've split them up into two different pieces. And, and so instead of trying mm -hmm. to chunk the one record level calc across everything all in one all in one shot, you're saying, let me do a record level calc to get the B stuff when it's blueberry. Let me do a separate mm -hmm. record level calc to get the C stuff when it's carrot. And then you're adding those two up together, which which does the aggregation after the two inner joins. Yep. So our inner join and it isn't crossing three logical tables. We have two inner joins that are each crossing only two logical tables. Got it. So so your your B record level value does the inner join from your main table to to the blueberries. And then your your yep. C record level value doesn't interjoin from the main table to the carrots, um, mm -hmm. which is those two things separately. Then you add those two separately attained interjoin values to one another after the fact. Yes. Whereas when you tried to club it all together into a single record level calc, that's when you got the interjoin between all three tables, which which doesn't work. Yes. Got it. Okay. Wow. Yep. So, so kind of solving the problem with just a, a rejiggering of, of where we're doing the operations. And in this case, I had um, 
built both of these calculations separately so that way I could drop them in a view and just kind of keep on, keep on adding my measures to see everything working together and get um, those correct results. Let me just drop off row ID now. So I'm seeing the nine and the five that I expect. And these don't have to be like this as separate calculations. So here's one where I've fully embedded the sum ifs inside the calculation. And this just goes to show, even though this is a row level calculation and this is a row level calculation, they're separated by two aggregations. They're, they're each aggregated separately. So these operations are done separately on each of the tables and we get same results. Got it right. So it's not that it's not that it was all clubbed together in a single calculation that was the problem. Because here you've you've clubbed it all together in a single calculation. It's that it was all clubbed together in a single row level um, execution, and then aggregated after the fact that was the problem. And what you've done is by 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 summing the the one record level calc and summing the second level level calc and then adding those two together. Um, that's the thing that reverses the sequence in which the the processing occurs. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So the the when you use the term clubbing together, the way I think is we're clubbing together operations across more than two logical tables, and so that inner join is the intersection of everything in all of those logical tables. Yeah. Oh my God. I can see how that would be totally confusing and. I mean, I've got increasingly data sources that I'm modeling with lots of logical tables, and I haven't encountered this yet, but I I can see that when I ran into that circumstance where I was trying to traverse two and three and four and five logical tables all with a record level calc, I could be totally confused by why is the number not coming out the way I would expect. And that's because there's sparsity in some of the logical tables and when you try to do an inner join across all of them, you wind up with this super narrow subset that is not actually the what you're looking for. Yep. Yeah, and that's, you mentioned the word confusion there, and that's something totally for me too, that I was confused seeing this, and it was only that I'd, I'd run into a couple times before that I had that little voice in the back of my head saying, check things out. So. Doing this is helping me remember for next time, and hopefully it'll help our viewers as well. Yeah, and so here, just to highlight, this is Jonathan's process, which everybody um, should learn to follow. When you're working out a calculation, work it out like one step at a time, like building Lego blocks, and just build a cross tab that's at the right level of detail and drag your ingredient components out one at a time and verify what's happening um, so that you can work it out um, seeing the numbers. And then after you've worked out the calc and it does what you want, then you can go on around to kind of rearrange the pills and, and make the viz. Totally. Yep. Yeah. So that's what I got. Sweet. Thanks and for we'll, sharing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, note to self, when doing record level calcs across multiple logical tables, um, test what I'm doing and pay attention and mm -hmm. work around the inner join behavior by partitioning um, separate aggregate calcs uh, to rearrange the order of operations um, to, to get the value that you're looking for. Yep. Sweet. Thank right. you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. See you soon. All right. Bye.